What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 shortest lived championship belts in WWE history. This should be an interesting one, man. Um, WWE has had a, a, a list of championship belts in, you know, depending on what era uh, they were introduced in. So I'm definitely interested to, you know, kind of get some more history and, and uh, tidbits on some of these belts and how long they uh, lasted in the company. Uh, this should be something quite interesting. I love videos like these, man. But uh, I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel, man. You guys are truly amazing. And uh, let's get right into this one. All right. Let's get right into it. Where would professional wrestling be without championships? If you're gonna have people pretend to fight each other, then they may as well be <laughs> doing it for a pretend title belt. These yeah. shiny pants holder uppers have been the focal point of some of the industry's greatest moments, as well as shifting millions of dollars worth of merch. Of course, WWE of course. currently has 14 active championships if you include NXT, but its past is filled with titles that have come and gone. Today, we will be looking at the ones the that away. came and went in the shortest amount of time. Just a note, we are counting a title's lifespan from when it was first won to when it was officially deactivated. Mm. We are also including its entire history, rather than just the time it was in WWE, so no WCW or ECW title on here. Got all mm. that? Good, because I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 shortest lived championships in WWE history. Join us. Should be Number a good 10, one. the NXT United Kingdom Championship, 5 years, 8 months, and 20 Damn. days. In January of 2017, British wrestling fans were given a right old treat when WWE put on its first ever United Kingdom Championship tournament. Mm -hmm. This two-night event ended with Tyler Bate defeating Pete Dunne to become the company's first ever UK champ. At the age of 19 years... Yo, that belt, still one of the best looking belts WWE has ever produced. Oh my god, that belt looks so good. Oh, by the way, disgusting behavior, honestly. Sadly, what started out as brightly as the Blackpool Illuminations fizzled out faster than you could say, Hey up, Chuck. Bate and Dunn had a great rematch at NXT TakeOver Chicago, but after mm -hmm. Dunn won the title, the belt just sort of disappeared. The Bruiserweight was champion for a mammoth 685 Ooh. days before dropping the belt to Volta, who held it for an even more impressive 870 days. Crazy. Yet in all that time, the title got about as much exposure as we Brits get to sunlight. It didn't help that NXT UK didn't start up until over a year after the belt was formed, and even when it did exist, hardly anybody actually watched it. In the end, two-time champion Bates lost a unification match to Bron Breaker in mm -hmm. 2022 to retire the title after less than six years in existence. Damn. A sad end for this most royal and beautiful of championships. Bro, that belt looks so good, man. <laughs> that belt looks beautiful. Number nine, the WWF European Championship. Five I years, this four one. months, and 26 days. I remember the European The fact that the WWE UK title lasted four months longer than the WWE European title will no doubt give some Brexiteers a great deal of joy. On February 26, 1997, the British Bulldog defeated Owen Hart in a tournament final to be crowned WWE's first ever European champion. Over the next five plus years, the title became something for lower mid-carders to mm -hmm. fight over when they had nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Though the likes of Shawn Michaels and Triple H held it, the title is most famously associated with people such as D'Lo Brown, X-Pac, Shane McMahon, and Midian, who won the title by finding it in a bag. How prestigious. <laughs> what the, the hell? The championship eventually bit the dust on the July 22, 2002 edition of Raw when Rob Van Dam beats Jeff Hardy in a ladder match to unify it with his own intercontinental belt. Mm. It was a nice idea while it lasted, but this was definitely a championship Not with a, bad a limited belt shelf either. life. Also, only two of its holders were actually European, so yeah, kind of failed the mission statement there. Yeah. Number 8, the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Five years, three months, and 22 days. Another short-lived 
title, another tournament started by Triple H. Mm -hmm. Sensing a theme here, yeah. the Cruiserweight Classic <laughs> was a fantastic summer-long series of matches that enthralled indie wrestling nerds like myself in 2016. WWE presented us with some of the greatest performers under £205 from across the globe, including the likes of Zack Sabre Jr., Kota Ibushi, and everyone's favourite, Kenneth Johnson, a hero to us all. TJ Perkins <laughs> won the whole thing and the newly minted WWE Cruiserweight title. This was a different belt to the old Cruiserweight Championship mm -hmm. before you come at us in the comments. After a disastrous attempt to get the division over on Raw, the Didn't Cruiserweights work, were eventually shunted down to NXT. Then, after flailing around down there for a bit, the belt was unified with Carmelo Hayes' North American title when he beats Roderick Strong at New Year's Evil 2022. Despite only existing for the lifespan of your average hamster, the belt was <laughs> held by some pretty big names. Mm -hmm. You had Neville, Rich Swan, Kushida, Enzo and Mo loads of big names <laughs> brian kendrick oh this title Yo, was held by some big either. names number seven the nxt uk women's championship four years and nine days many sources state that this title i still love this design too even though it, the white strap it's just the what's on the actual plate looks so good it, it makes it look so prestigious, man. Came into existence on June 18th, 2018. But this is wrong. That is the date it was announced, not the date it was first won. Mm. That, dear viewers, was the episode of NXT UK taped on the 26th August, 2018, when Rhea Ripley beat Tony Storm to win a tournament. Wow. Ah, yes, Rhea Ripley and Tony Storm, those two famously British wrestlers. <laughs> In fact, only one of the four women to hold the NXT UK Women's Championship was actually actually born in Blighty. You heard me right, only four different people officially <laughs> held this belt. Ripley Damn. lost it to Storm at TakeOver Blackpool, who lost it to Kaylee Ray, now Alba Fire, at TakeOver Cardiff, who lost it to Mako Satamora during the time vortex known as the pandemic. And that is it. Damn. Mandy Rose unifying the titles at Worlds Collide 2022 does not count as her holding the belt. Mm -mm. Four different champions, four years. Wow. Sadly, this title suffered from a lack of exposure. Whilst it's Male counterpart was featured on the American NXT a few times. This one resided solely on NXT UK. Mm. And let's face it, you could count the number of viewers that show had on one hand. Post amputation. Damn. Number six, the WWF Hardcore Championship. Three years, nine months, and 25 days. One. Of all the championships on this list, few, if any, are as fondly remembered as the Hardcore title. Mm -hmm. Gifted to Mick Foley as a <laughs> thank you for knocking his brains out in the service of entertainment, the Hardcore title would then bounce around between the likes of Al Snow, Big Boss Man, and Hardcore Holly. I it actually like. The, the 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 design of it because it's basically the wing eagle belt but it's broken the plates is broken it has hardcore taped on it i like that it's it's literally the wing eagle belt just cracked up and broken and plates are all in different places i like the design of it it wasn't until bob core's cousin crash got the belt in february it's not of 2000 the prettiest, but that I like its the most famous it. caveat was introduced the 24 7 rule mm -hmm. this meant that the championship could now be defended at any time and in any place that had a referee present which led to some of the funniest yeah, moments no, in wwe sure. history Crash defending the title in a ball pit, Mighty Molly winning it off the hurricane by thwacking him with a frying pan, <laughs> Gerald Briscoe pinning a sleeping Crash to win the gold. <laughs> WWE don't always do comedy right, but when they do, it's fantastic. It's and hilarious. this was. <laughs> After 240 reigns shared between 52 wrestlers, the beloved belt said its last goodbye after Rob Van Dam beat Tommy Dreamer on an August 2002 episode of Raw. If you're playing along at home, that's two championships yeah. that RVD has killed now. Cool. That's, that's crazy. He's taking out two championships. <laughs> RVD, the championship killer. <laughs> As he would say. Number five, the NXT UK Tag Team Championships. Three years, seven months, and 28 days. On the same night that the NXT UK Women's Championship went down, down the toilet, toilet. <laughs> the brand's tag team titles also went the way of the dodo. They look Champions good too. Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs were competing in a fatal four-way for both the NXT and NXT UK tag straps. That match was won by Pretty Deadly, who became the NXT Tag Team Champions and retired the UK versions in the process. Mm -hmm. Yes, boys. The British tag belts were first won by the grizzled young veterans at NXT UK Take 
take over Blackpool in January of 2019. Despite existing for three months less than the NXT UK women's title, these championships had almost double the number of holders and even managed to fit a vacancy in there too. Oh, Mustache damn. Mountain, Gallus, the aforementioned Pretty Deadly, they all held the belts until time was called on the NXT UK experiment. These titles suffered from the same lack of prominence that plagued NXT UK, despite plenty of excellent wrestlers competing for them in plenty of excellent matches. Maybe they're lineage will be revived when NXT Europe gets off the ground. Mm -hmm. If it gets off the ground. Number we'll 4. The WWE 24-7 Championship. 3 years, 5 months and 20 days. You ever see those DVDs in supermarkets that are clearly meant to look like popular films even though they're just a <laughs> cheap rip off? That Facts. is what the 24-7 Championship was to the hardcore type. Facts. The only, in my opinion, the only thing that worked for this title uh, for this championship was our truth he made this he was the best part of the 24 7 championship because the dude is hilarious but outside of that everything else about this was trash so the chop kick panda to the hardcore's kung fu panda the 24 7 title was introduced by mick foley on of the course. may 20th 2019 yep, edition of raw after titus o'neill of all people became the first champion the belt fell into the hands of its most famous owner Facts. our truth <laughs> truth held the hideous olive green wart for a combined total of 423 days across a maddening 53 different reigns. <laughs> By the way, that technically gives the former K-Quick more title reigns than anyone else in WWE history. <laughs> Fair play, much deserved. Whilst a good idea to begin with, the 24-7 title became more of a hindrance to WWE yes. programming over time. The company ran out of good ideas very quickly, despite occasionally great input from the likes of Truth, Akira yeah. Tozawa, and Drake Maverick. The title was binned by Nikki Cross <laughs> almost as soon as Trip Triple H took over creative. Yep, well, it, it away. was nearly been. Yeah, Number three, the <laughs> WWF North American Heavyweight Championship. Two years, Not one sure month, and eight this days. One. The first of our old-timey oddity championships now, and one oh, very few modern wrestling time. fans will have heard of. Yeah, before he was accused before of time. defrauding the state of Mississippi, Ted DiBiase was a respected name in the world of pro wrestling. The nickname Million Dollar Man has a whole different meaning now, doesn't it? <laughs> DBS first signed for WWE back in 1979 and was yeah, immediately thought, given a yeah. title belt upon his arrival. This was the WWF North American Heavyweight Championship and Ted would carry it for 126 days before losing it to Pat Patterson thanks to some brass knuckles. Oh, wow. Patterson in turn lost it to Japanese wrestler Seiji Sakaguchi who held it for 532 days before the company completely gave up on the belt in 1981. It may have only existed for a little over two years, but this championship is actually pivotal to the history of WWE. Whilst holding the belt, Pat Patterson won a fictional tournament in Rio de Janeiro to unify it with the equally made up South American Heavyweight Championship. Mm. And thus, the Intercontinental Championship was born. Wow. Number two, the WWF That's Intercontinental crazy. Tag Team Championships, five months and 25 tag days. Team a sloth's pregnancy cycle is roughly That's six months crazy. long. Why am I mentioning this? Well, A, because I love sloths, who doesn't? And B, because that means a baby sloth is gestating for longer than the WWF Intercontinental Tag Team Championships were a thing. Information about these belts is scarce, but WWE's official website does have a small piece on them. According to WWE.com, the championships were never defended in the United States. Wow. Instead, they were created as part of a working relationship between the company and Japanese promotion, the Universal Wrestling Federation. In January of 1991, the gold was handed over to Mexican performer Pero Aguayo and Japanese wrestler Gran Hamada. However, these two would become the only holders of the titles as the wow. partnership between the WWF and UWF ended later that year. Number one, the WWF Canadian Championship. That's crazy. I didn't even know there was Intercontinental Tag Team Championships. I didn't know how the Intercontinental Championship was even created. And now there's a WWF Canadian Championship? This is crazy. Five months and five days. Though he's more famous now for probably being whacked by the mob, Canadian wrestler Dino Bravo was quite the sensation back in the day. To capitalize on his popularity, WWE awarded Dino the Canadian Championship in August of 1985. 
Details on how often the championship was actually defended are spotty, to say the least. But we do know that the belt was vacated after just five months and five days when Bravo left the company in early 1986. Uh. When the strongman returned later that year, the title did not return with him. That makes our boy Dino the first, last, and only person to hold this fabled piece of WWE history. Wrestling might seem like the Wild West now, but it was off the scale in the 80s. Stuff happened all the time, and nobody was really there to properly document it, so all sorts of wacky titles could have been created and uncreated in the space of a week. However, we have to go with what we know, so please join me in awarding the WWF Canadian Championship with the shortest-lived championship championship. And let us never speak of it again. (laughs) Nah, that was crazy, man. Like, dead ass. I was wow. I I love videos like these. Very informative. If you guys know any other championships that WWE created that wasn't uh, listed in this video that has short title reigns or didn't really get much TV time, let me know down below, man. Videos like these are always informative and dope. I didn't even know that's how the Intercontinental Championship was created. Didn't even know there was Intercontinental Tag Team titles. That's crazy. Or Canadian. A world heavyweight champion man that's awesome so but let me know any other uh titles that were created that you guys didn't know about or you know that weren't listed in this video put them down below man and maybe we can have a discussion and you know talk about them or whatnot but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace